All right, so good morning and welcome to Christ-Centered Foundational Yoga. Um, today, if you could have at least a blanket, maybe two blocks, if you have blocks. If you don't have blocks, by the way, toilet paper rolls <laughs> or paper towel rolls work really, really well just to have something to support the hands and bring the floor closer. Um, and then a strap, you could also use like a men's belt, um, a men's tie, or even a women's scarf. So feel free to, to grab those items really quick. And we're gonna start on our backs and I want you to um, make yourself as comfortable as, po comfortable as possible. So a suggestion might be to support the back of the head. You can take a blanket or a rolled up towel and then just create a little neck roll. So I'm rolling up the bottom edge so that I have some support for the back of my neck. Um, and we're gonna start on our back. Today, we're gonna start in constructive rest position. So it's kind of like corpse pose, but the knees are bent with the feet on the floor. So the feet will just um, be as close to the seat as possible, stacking the knees over the ankles and just allow the feet to plug in, grounding down here. Walk your hands towards your feet to get the shoulders away from the ears and then turn the palms to face upwards so that we can begin to kind of open up the heart space. And then notice if you have like a sway or a lift in that low back. And one of the things you can do is either just kind of melt the navel to your spine to flatten the back, or you can actually pick up the hips for a moment, curl the tail upward and then lower back down to flatten the back. So do what feels best for your body and then close your eyes and begin to settle into this shape, just arriving on your mat. So often we're here physically, but we're not fully here. Our mind is elsewhere. So this is our opportunity to start to check in, to bring ourselves into this present moment fully. And so with your eyes closed, take a moment to notice all the points of your body that are touching the floor. And so just kind of notice as you scan your field of attention, just feeling your body grounding feeling the earth to come up and support you, but also allowing your body to begin to kind of melt into the mat and into the floor so that you feel a softness, a relaxation, letting go of any muscular tension, letting go of any stress as you begin to just kind of sink into this shape. And then we're gonna take three cleansing breaths to just come into a space of presence. So inhale deeply into the nose, filling into the lungs, fully expanding, inflating in every direction. Exhaling out through an open mouth, just sigh it out. Ah, you made it, you're here. That is the hardest part of the practice is showing up. Do two more cleansing breaths like this, in through the nose, Filling in, expanding, inflating the lungs. Exhale out, releasing the breath through an open mouth. Feel the jaw and the face begin to relax. Feel the body become a little heavier, a little softer, a little more relaxed. And then one more big cleansing breath like this. Filling in, filling up. And exhale, release, let go. Nice. And now we're gonna to begin to do something called retained boxed breathing. And so what that looks like is we're gonna inhale for a count of four, filling into the lungs completely. Hold at the top of the breath. So hold your breath for a count of four. Exhale for a count of four, letting all the breath go and then hold the exhale for a count of four. So you might even envision in your mind's eye that we're drawing the sides of a box. So inhaling up the left side of the box, holding across the top of the box as you draw it in your mind, exhaling down the right side of the box, and then holding at the bottom, drawing the bottom edge of the box. 
And so just continue like this as you inhale in your mind's eye, drawing this box. Let this be a box of safety, a box where maybe you're going into a sacred space, just you and God on your mat. Maybe you envision just his protection surrounding you, his love surrounding you on all sides, just a loving fortress of safety, security, and his presence. You can continue to breathe like this or at any time, release control of the breath and just find a nice slow steady rhythm for your breath. Today, I wanna to spend some time talking about self-care. So scripture tells us that our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. First Corinthians chapter six, verses 19 and 20 say, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own for you were bought at a price. So glorify God in your body. The reality is that when we recognize the importance of this scripture and that we're being told that this body is a temple that houses the Holy Spirit, it can reframe our perspective on self-care to recognize how important it is that we diligently care for these holy temples that we've been giving, given. So self-care includes those intentional activities that have a desirable effect upon our health and our overall well-being. They're necessary for us to live a healthy, vibrant, and well-balanced life and to carry out God's mission for us here on earth. Audre Lord said, self-care is not self-indulgent. It is self-preservation. It's been said that we are not a body with a spirit. We are a spirit that indwells a body and, and God's spirit indwells this body. His very breath and blood flow through us as we're told in our scripture. And so thank you for showing up for yourself today. And today we're going to take some time to really honor, build some resiliency, promote healing and restoration of these beautiful holy temples that we have been given. On your next inhale, we're gonna go ahead and float the right knee up. And then just take hold of the back of your leg. So behind the knee or around the back side of your hamstring and slowly draw that knee in toward your chest. This little squeeze here, starting to lubricate that right hip joint, also moving into the ascending colon here. And then we're gonna to begin to release the entire back body through a very simple motion. So on the inhale, flex the foot and begin to take the heel toward the ceiling, keeping that leg drawn in toward your chest. You don't have to straighten the leg. On the exhale, point the toes and begin to bend the knee again. And we're just gonna move like this a few times. Flex that foot, inhale, lift. Point the toes, exhale, lower. This is also gonna help synovialize the knee joint. So synovial fluid is an egg white like substance that helps the joints to glide. And when that substance isn't present, we have all kinds of friction in the joint and it actually can end up with things like arthritis, bursitis and other challenges. And so we wanna keep the joints nice and healthy and mobile keep them nice and lubricated. This also is releasing a fascial chain that runs along the back side of your body from your heel all the way up to the top of your head. 
And so if you feel that kind of tightness along the back body, this is gonna help release that. Beautiful job. On your next inhale, let's go ahead and lift the leg. And we're gonna slowly open our leg out to the right. So stay grounded through that left side. You can take the left arm out to the side like a wing if you'd like. And we can hold the leg from the outside. We can add a little bit of a deeper stretch by pressing into the inside, or we can even hook the big toe if that's available. This is also a great place for a strap. So you can feel free to loop the strap around the ball of the foot, just extending your arm a little bit. Continue to breathe here. Opening into that hip, the inner thigh, the groin area. On the inhale, let's go ahead and bring that leg back up. And then we're gonna cross the right knee over the left, just drape it across the leg here. Nice. Begin to draw the knees up toward your chest. You can take the hands around the back side of that left leg or around the front side and begin to bring your chest up and your forehead toward your knee. Good, lots of breath here. Now, while you're up here, we'll hold on to that left leg with the right hand. Take your left hand over to your foot that's over there on the left. Flex into that foot and begin to draw the heel toward your hip. This is a piriformis stretch. Feels really, really good. It helps to mitigate some of the effects of stress. We end up with tight piriformis, tight glutes, tight psoas muscle when we are stressed. And so why do we talk about stress? Well, Stress is a normal part of our life. Slowly lower the head and certainly we had a undue amount of stress in the last 12 months or more. Okay, keep stretching. 75 to 90% of all visits to medical practitioners are due to stress-related ailments and complaints. And 43% of all Americans say that they suffer from the adverse effects of stress. Now this was a statistic pre-COVID. So imagine what those numbers are now. Go ahead and bring that left foot down. We're gonna bring the arms out to the sides like wings and we're gonna do a little mental yoga. So remember, we are a whole being, mind, heart, body, and spirit. Keeping those palms up will allow the knees to go over to the left, turn the right palm to face down and then gaze over your right hand. On the inhale, bring the knees back up, palms face up, gazes up. On the exhale, take the knees over to the right, turn the left palm down and gaze left. This helps us with coordination and proprioception, also great for the brain. Turn the palm up, bring the gaze up. We'll take the knees over to the left, turn the right palm down, gaze to the right. Inhale, knees come up, palms up, gaze up. Exhale, knees go over to the right, left palm faces down, gaze over your left hand. Inhale, knees up. And this time we're gonna keep both palms facing up and just allow the knees to go over to the left into a little deeper twist. So just relax here, breathe into this twist. Let the right shoulder soften toward the mat, keeping that heart nice and open. Twists are great for helping us to keep our spine healthy, but also to rid the body of toxins. Toxins can affect our health and our well being. 70% of our toxins leave the body through the breath. So in through the nose, out and open mouth, just to help the body let go of those toxins that can make us sick or unhealthy. But also there's mental, emotional toxins, right? So what toxic thoughts, energies, and emotions can we let go of, can we give to God? Beautiful. So they begin to unravel that twist, unravel the legs and draw the knees into your chest. Keep your eyes closed here. And as you rock a little side to side, I want you to notice the difference between the two sides already. 
It's amazing how just a little bit of attending to our body's needs can make big changes in the way that we feel and the way we breathe. Go ahead and float that right foot down to the floor. Take your hands behind your left leg. We're gonna hug it in for a moment. So just that nice compression into the left hip and also into the descending colon. This helps with digestion and elimination. There are a lot of things that we need to digest and eliminate, not just physically. And we're gonna flex the foot, take the heel high, point the toes, bend the knee. Good, and keep moving like this. Flex the foot, inhale, lift, point the toes, bend the knee. So the greatest commandments are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Heart, emotions, mind, intellect, soul, spirit, strength, body. And so this recognizes that we are a whole person, that we are comprised of all these different parts that make us who we are. And in order to fully love the God and, and love God and serve God as a whole person, we have to take care of our mind, heart, body, and spirit. Good, we're gonna go ahead and begin to straighten into that leg. Open up to the left. And again, you can hook the toe, grab a hold of the inside of the leg, use a strap, whatever feels good. Take the right arm out to the side like a wing, palm faces up. And so what are we doing to nurture and nourish and keep our mind, body, heart and spirit healthy. Is there an area where maybe you've neglected some aspect of yourself that maybe is calling for your attention now? On the inhale, let's go ahead and bring that leg up. We're gonna drape the left knee over the right. Beautiful. Take a hold of either the back of the leg or the front and then begin to lift yourself, bringing your forehead towards your knee. Breathe here. Just feeling that stretch into the low back and into the hip. While you're here, hold on to the left leg. Let's reach for the right foot, flex the foot and draw that heel a little closer to our hip. Don't forget to breathe. Your body needs that vital breath, that oxygen muscles to release, but also for the muscles to have the strength they need to hold some of the poses we're gonna do later. Slowly lower the head back down, just remaining here a couple more breaths, little deeper stretch. Slow, deep rhythmic breaths. Good. Release your grip, let that right foot float to the floor. Take the arms out to the sides like wings, palms face up. And then we're gonna tick tock the knees. So the knees are gonna go right, turn the left palm down, gaze over your left hand. Just challenging our brain a little bit. Inhale, knees come up, palms face up. Take the legs over to the left, right palm turns down, gaze right. Good, and we're gonna keep moving like this. See if you can remember. <laughs> what to do, challenge your mind a little bit. One of the things that I love about yoga is its purpose is to unite the mind, heart, body, and spirit. The word yoga comes from the word yuj, which means to unite, to bind together. It also means to tie the strands of the mind together. And so our purpose is to unite our whole self and then to dedicate our whole self to the Lord. We are our holy temple of the spirit after all. Next time the knees go to the right, keep the palms facing up. 
Allow the knees to just soften toward the floor on the right. Soften that left shoulder, take your gaze to the left. Breathe here. In through the nose, out an open mouth. <sighs> so when we look at the importance of diligently caring for these holy temples, taking care of our mind, heart, body, and spirit, as we are in service to the Lord, to magnify, to glorify him, to fulfill our purpose here on earth, carry out his mission, his will. It changes our attitudes and beliefs around self-care. In fact, it maybe makes us more compelled to make time for it. So to begin to unravel, unravel those legs, draw the knees in one more time. Ah, you might already notice difference in the low back and the hips and the way you're breathing. Good, roll yourself to one side and just pause there for a moment. Good, just taking a moment in a fetal position. Jennifer Loudon says uh, self-care is not selfish or self-indulgent. We cannot nurture others from a dry well. We need to take care of our own needs first. Then we give from our surplus, our abundance. And so we want to give from a space of abundance. We wanna to give to a point where we're not, where we're staying tied into the source. So tapped into the source, which is God, so that there's this constant flowing through us rather than tapping out of our own resources, doing it in our own strength, so to speak. We're gonna come up and find a nice seated position. We're gonna do a little bit of neck and shoulder stuff because this is a place where we hold on to stress. So we're gonna release and open those areas. So you might choose to take a blanket, fold it up. You could also use a block to sit on or a bolster, whatever feels good to you. And just bring the edge of your seat to the edge of that. Now, if a simple seated where your legs are kind of cross-legged um, isn't working, you can extend one leg out. So go with what feels best for your body. About halfway through, we're going to change sides anyway. Have your strap handy. Good. This is a foundational pose, simple seated. So make sure you feel the foundation underneath you. Move the excess tissue out of the way, ground down into those sits bones. Lengthen the spine, rolling the shoulders back and down. In fact, let's do that a few times. So let's roll the shoulders out just to start loosening things up. I already have some popping and cracking. I'm gonna do this more often. And go in the other direction. It's funny, I was in a yoga retreat all weekend. I was doing yoga twice a day and I'm still tight today. <laughs> Tells you how important moving our body is. All right, we're gonna look Lift those shoulders up back and down, and then we're gonna roll our head. So we're gonna just go in whichever direction. Notice any places that are a little sticky. If you feel like you need to hang out there, hang out there. Those are called speed bumps. They're there to slow us down. Pay attention. Not like my kids when they first learned to drive and they thought speed bumps were there to uh, go as fast as you can and take flight in your vehicle. <laughs> Although I'm pretty sure I did that too when I was 16, 17 years old. All right, let's go in the other direction. Lots of breath. Nice job. Good. And then we'll go ahead and just do a few cat cows here. So even with that leg extended, um, you can just bring up one or both knees. We're gonna curl and round the spine. On the inhale, open up, lifting the heart, drawing the shoulders back, lifting our gaze. Let's just do this a few times. Exhale, rounding it out. Inhale, opening the heart. Beautiful, exhale, round it out. And inhale, opening up, beautiful. Bring your head back to neutral, nice long straight spine. Let's switch the feet out. So whichever was in front, 
you'll switch it. Um, or you'll switch sides if you have one leg extended. All right. So we're sitting up nice and tall. Find your foundation once again. Align yourself. Stacking ears over shoulders, shoulders over hips. And we're going to take a hold of our strap. All right. So we're going to start by holding the strap fairly wide. And you may need to adjust wider or closer together, just depending on your body and where it's at today. So I like to loop my hands around the strap because then I don't have to squeeze and hold on. So now see how I've looped it. We're going to reach the arms up, draw the shoulders down. Beautiful. And you can always kind of widen it. Just I'm like literally wiggling my hands to make it a little wider because I think I'm going to need it wider. And then we're going to slowly begin to reach behind us to the first place where you feel a stretch. Hold and breathe here. We spend so much time with the shoulders up around the ears and rounded forward, whether on laptops or phones, driving. It's called ventral drag. Everything draws toward the center of the body. The other thing about that is it's the position of stress, fight or flight, moving into like curling up into a fetal position. Let the uh, hands go a little bit further back. Now, if you're having to bend in your elbows, your shoulders are lifting, you might need to widen your stance. Widen your grip a little bit. Keep breathing. We're gonna slowly lower down a little bit further, opening into the chest and the heart space. It's been said that our heart is the softest place in our body. So think about that. How do we nurture it? How do we care for it? We know that the peace of the Lord that transcends all understanding will guard our hearts and our mind in Christ. So that's what protects us. We don't need to protect ourselves in that way. We need to allow the Lord to provide his protection so our heart can remain soft and, and have that ability to love and be kind and compassionate. Lower down a little further. And so here's the thing about compassion. If our compassion doesn't include ourself, it's incomplete. So how much compassion and kindness are you showing toward yourself? Love your neighbor as yourself. That word as is very important. And then slowly lower down. Oh my goodness. Take a moment, maybe even wiggle out those fingers for a second. And then we're going to come back up. So on the inhale, we're going to begin to bring the hands up until we feel a stretch. You might find a different place of challenge called the edge. Challenge to change at the edge, but never go to a place where it's pinchy, pointy, sharp, harsh. We're going to come up a little higher. Keep breathing here. Ah, let that breath go. Nice job, come up a little higher. Keep breathing where you're feeling the sensation. And then come all the way up. Then we're just gonna do a little lateral bending. So we're just gonna hinge over to the left. I'm mirroring you. Hopefully it's translating as left, I'm not sure. Inhale, come up, because I do have my screen mirroring also. So I'll have to ask my husband later. I'm coming up over to the right. Nice, come back up and then we'll float the hands down, my goodness. All right, shake that out a little bit. So we can shake to the front, this is really good for just moving energy out to the sides, out to the back, and to the sides again, to the front, and then just settle in for just a moment. Close those eyes, feel. Maybe feel the difference in those shoulders, those subtle changes that take place when we pay attention and then we attend to our body and its needs. Self-care is an act of self-love. It's also an act of love of God. Change the way you think about it. Mind your thoughts. Beautiful, let's go ahead and come on to all fours for just a moment. And here, if you're healing in your knees, you may want to have a blanket underneath those knees. 
good. We're gonna take our blocks and place them near the front of the mat if you have blocks uh, or whatever you may have. We're gonna walk the hands out in front a little bit. So they're not quite under the shoulders, a little bit further, maybe a handprint in front, maybe two. Just kind of play it out, um, see where your body wants to go. Knees are about hip width distance apart, maybe slightly wider. And we're just gonna start kind of rocking back and forth. So you're gonna go into like almost a child's pose, almost an up dog, just feeling out your body here. See where your body wants to go, get curious. You may want to come all the way back and feel that beautiful stretch into the shoulders and the back. You might be able to come all the way forward with those hips. Just make sure you're sliding your heart forward, stacking your shoulders over your wrists to protect your shoulders. Exhale, take it back. Inhale, coming forward. Nice, exhale, coming back. Inhale, coming forward. Good, this time we're gonna come and stand on our knees, take our hands, to our hips, let's step the left foot forward. You can bring your hands to blocks on either side of that foot if you like. And then the other option would be maybe to bring your hands to your knee if you don't have blocks or you can't touch the floor. And then we're just gonna start rocking here, just starting to open those hips a little bit more. I'm gonna make sure that your knee doesn't go in front of your toes but we wanna find a nice opening into those hips. Beautiful. Have your strap near the front of your mat. We're gonna play with something in a little bit here. Tuck your back toes, let's lift those hips high and lift that back leg up, good. And then maybe you can begin to do that rocking motion here. Totally up to you. If you wanna keep that knee down, keep it down. Otherwise, maybe you're playing with going back and forth between kind of a modified pyramid down to a runner's lunge. Just getting a little bigger with the motion. Good. Now we're gonna to begin to pivot that back foot so that the back foot is flat on the mat I'm gonna go ahead and just move my blanket out of the way for a moment so you can see better. Um, that right foot is pointing toward the right front corner of my mat. Good. And then make sure you're not on a tight rope. So you might need to heel your left foot to the left just a little bit. So make sure you set up your foundation. This is foundational yoga after all. And then we're gonna slowly um, begin to take a hold of the strap in our right hand, bring that hand behind us. Good. And then with your left hand, take a hold of the strap as well. So we're coming into a humble warrior holding on to the strap. Begin to melt your heart here. You can rest your left side of your rib cage on your left thigh. Crown moves forward, pressing to the outer edge of that back foot. Lots of breath. Nice job. Holding on to the strap as if somebody is taking a hold of your hands to pull you up. We're gonna press into that foot and lift ourselves up. Squaring our shoulders and hips to the front. So this is a version of warrior one, but our hands are holding onto that strap. Slide the hands down, keeping that heart open. And you may choose to have a back bend here. So you might start to lift your gaze up, lift your heart up, keep rolling the shoulders back and down. Otherwise just stay here, gaze this forward. Shoulders are drawing back and down. So we're keeping that heart nice and open either way. Nice job. This is a reverse warrior with a little back bend. Exhale, we're gonna start to hinge forward at the hips and lower back down into humble warrior. Humble yourselves before the Lord and in due time, he will lift you up. Lots of breath. We're gonna go ahead and release the strap for now. So just release that, keep it near you. 
And now we're gonna bring our um, back foot on a wider angle. So now the back foot, back edge of the foot is lining up with the back of your mat. And then slide your left forearm onto your left thigh. Take your right hand to your right hip, begin to lift up. So we're lifting this right hip, we're lifting this right shoulder. And then take your hand to your shoulder and we're gonna draw circles. Our hips and shoulders are orienting sideways now. Make sure you're not dumping into that left arm. Nice job, just nice mobility here in the shoulder. This should feel really good. Good, reach that hand back as if someone were taking a hold of that wrist, slowly come up. Nice, take your left hand to the inside of your left thigh reach that right hand back, gaze over your left hand, a version of warrior two here. Keep breathing. Nice job. Bring that arm all the way up and over and around. We're gonna windmill down, back into that low runner's lunge. Nice. And now we'll go ahead and step that back foot forward. Feet are about hip width distance apart. Bend the knees deeply. Let your belly and rib cage rest to your thighs. Let your head hang. Shoulders draw away from those ears. Tail is lifting as the crown falls toward the earth. All right, lift halfway. And then we're gonna step that left foot way back and lower down into that low runner's lunge. Again, hands can be on blocks, on the floor, or up on your leg. We're gonna start by just rocking back and forth here. Nice job. So I mentioned earlier that we have to take care of ourselves before we can take care of others. Or we tap out, right? We're doing things in our own steam and we will have a health event. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. <laughs> Good, we're gonna tuck those back toes, lift the back leg and rock here as well, or keep that knee down. So if you've ever been on an airplane, you might recall at the beginning where they go through all the safety procedures and they talk about the oxygen mass dropping down. What do they tell you to do with that oxygen mass? They tell you to put it on yourself first before you help others. Because guess what? If you don't, you won't be able to help others. We're gonna spin that back foot flat Toes are gonna to point toward the front left corner of your mat. Toe heel your right foot to the right a little bit. Just get nice and sturdy here. Pick up the strap in either hand and we're gonna bring the hands behind us. Holding onto the strap, press the strap away from the body. Crown moves forward and you melt into this humble warrior shape. Resting your rib cage on your thigh. Some of you might be able to come more to the inside of the thigh. Just make sure it doesn't kick you out of alignment. That right hip will tend to kick out to the side and you'll get wonky. So we want you nice and straight here. Good. As if somebody were taking a hold of that strap to lift you, slowly come up to warrior one. Bend into that front knee, hips and shoulders square to the front, keep pressing the hands down, get the shoulders away from those ears. Maybe open the heart and begin to gaze up. Where's your breath? Nice job. Gaze forward, slowly lower down once again. Coming back to that humble warrior shape. Check in, let your crown move forward. Draw that chin in slightly so we're not, we don't have a kink in the back of the neck. Nice, now release the strap. 
Bring the hands to blocks. We'll pivot that back foot on a wider angle. You might need to toe heel your right foot in a little bit. We're gonna take our right forearm to our right thigh and then begin to lift the left hip, lift the left shoulder. So we're opening now toward the sidewall. Nice, just make sure you're not dumping into that shoulder. Take your hand to your shoulder and we're gonna begin to circle. Lots of breath. Nice job, reach that hand back behind you. Slide up, left hand to the inside of that thigh, press gently against it. As you reach back, gaze over that hand. Imagine taking yourself by the hand. Supporting yourself so that you can support others. cannot build on a shaky foundation. And if we don't manage our self-care, we will have a shaky foundation. Come up and over. Windmilling those hands all the way down. Beautiful. We're gonna step that foot forward. Bend the knees in this forward fold shape. Let the crown Hang, tail lifts, shoulders away from those ears. Make sure you have a straight spine. So that might mean you need to bend your knees more. Good, on your inhale, stretch and reach, coming all the way up. Lengthen here. Exhale, bring hands to heart. Good. Inhale, sweep, arms lift. Exhale, bend those knees, swan dive, fold forward. Inhale, lift halfway. Exhale, bend the knees, fold. Inhale, sweep, ride that breath. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, sweep, arms lift. Exhale, fold. Beautiful, inhale, lift halfway. And then we're gonna bend those knees to bring our seat all the way down. So come down however you need to, make sure it's safe. Awesome. And then we'll make our way to our back. So you can move the blanket out if you had a blanket. You can maybe use that for supporting the head. And then we'll take another block near us. So if you have a block, otherwise you can use some, a bolster or some folded blankets, but we're gonna take the feet to the mat and begin to um, stack the knees over the ankles. So bring those heels close to your seat and then lift those hips and we'll slide the block underneath lengthwise. We don't want the block under the um, spine, but instead under that hard triangular shaped bone at the base of our spine called our sacrum. So make sure you feel the contact there nice and supported. Adjust as you need to. We're just going to take a few breaths here in this supported back bend, which also happens to be an inversion. Inversions are when we have our head below our heart. It's great. It helps to bathe the brain with fresh blood and oxygen. It also helps to improve our circulation and Im improve lymphatic drainage, which is very important in terms of keeping our immune system strong. So to that end, we're gonna go ahead and take our right foot high. This is gonna help us drain the lymphatic system and drain the blood. Also, if we have swelling in the lower extremities, this will help alleviate that edema or swelling. Point and flex the foot. Our calf works like another heart or a pump to help pump lymphatic fluid and blood back toward the heart, back toward the core.
Good, bend that knee, gently float that right foot down, placing the foot on the floor, and then take that left heel high. Good, and then point and flex here. Keep breathing. Nice. Now we're going to take both heels up. This is a variation of legs up the wall. It's also a variation of plow pose, a supported plow pose. Super great for the body. It's been said that if we do inversions, ladies, we won't need Crinkle cream is what my teacher used to call it because it helps to bring blood flow to the face. It's also why you have a nice rosy glow after you've done some inversions in yoga. All right, let's go ahead and bend those knees. Let the knees come a little closer to your chest. Feel that little sacral massage. <sighs> and we'll float the feet back down. And just slide that block out from underneath. Good, we're gonna bring that left leg out long and then draw the right knee into the chest. Give it a nice squeeze here. Holding on to that knee with your left hand, take the right arm out to the side like a wing and then gently guide that knee across your body to the left. The right hip will lift, but you wanna keep that right shoulder grounded. Maybe gaze over your right hand, just breathe here. And our final spinal twist. We like to do a twist at the end of our practice to help realign the spine, but also to help bring the body back to homeostasis. Anything we can do to help support our body to get back to homeostasis, whether it's through breath, movement, intention, prayer, meditation, all these things help to calm the mind and body and bring it back to op optimal functioning. Good, we're gonna slowly unravel, bring that left knee in, send the right leg out long. Good, we're gonna hold on to that knee with the right hand. Take the left arm out to the side like a wing and begin to guide that knee across the body. Keep your left shoulder grounded, maybe gazing over that left hand. Lots of breath. Slowly well, begin to unravel. One more time, knees to chest. Just a little squeeze, kind of realign the spine. And then come into a big, beautiful full body stretch. So lengthen and reach those arms up overhead. I'm gonna do a little lateral bend. So Walk the feet over to the right corner of your mat, maybe even crossing your left ankle over your right. And then with your upper body, begin to reach toward the back right corner of the room. You can keep the hands interlaced if you want to, or you could float that right hand down, like reaching to the feet. 
and then reach that left hand up and over. Try to keep the hips and the shoulders grounded. Our tendency is kind of to roll to the right. So check in. Nice job. We're gonna slowly reach that right arm back up, unravel the legs if they are raveled, and we'll walk the feet over to the left. Again, you can cross the right ankle over if you like, and then we're gonna reach our upper body over to the left as well. You might choose to reach that left hand down or it might be a little more active where you're using your hands to help find a deeper stretch. It stretches the intercostal muscles between each of our ribs. It also helps with the lateral spinal flexion and extension. Great for the health of our spine. Helps with our breathing, opening our lung tissue. Good, we're gonna come back to neutral, back to the center, let the feet go wide, and then just release the hands alongside your hips with the palms facing upward. And just breathe, close your eyes. I'm gonna read you a poem that I think is just so beautiful by Melissa Simonson. And even though this happens to be written about a woman, it applies really to anyone. So sorry, Bob. <laughs> All right. Something powerful happens when a woman chooses to love herself. Like a flower opening for the first time, others cannot help but be moved by the beauty she creates. Her actions begin to inspire like a mandate. Love will overflow in this world. And as her love for herself grows, her petals start to unfurl. No matter how hard the wind blows, she is complete in herself. And she meets herself with presence and compassion. She owns the full effect of her actions. As she comes into full bloom, she perfumes every room she passes through. She is confident. She is queen. She meets people from the full expression of her being. She is presence. She is love. Through her, people start to claim themselves as enough. And it all begins with her simple choice to first drink of her own cup. When a woman chooses to love herself, she is choosing to lift up the world. Settle into the silence in this time of quiet reflection and let God meet you exactly where you are.
slowly begin to awaken the body. Noticing your physical body. Noticing the breath. Begin to slowly and gently awaken the body by bringing some movement to your fingers and your toes, ankles and wrists, perhaps even moving your head side to side. Gently draw your knees to your chest and give yourself a compassionate hug. Thank yourself for showing up today, for taking care of your holy temple. Now roll to one side, just pause there for a moment in a fetal position, position of possibility of new life. We are changed every time we show up on our mat and every time we invite God into it. He changes us, he shows us something new. He reveals himself a little more. He transforms us a little more. As you're ready, gently press yourself up, but allow your head to come up last. Just finding your way to a seated position, one that feels comfortable and safe. And bring your hands together in prayer at your heart center, just bowing your head to your heart. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God. You are not your own, for you were bought at a price. So glorify God in your body. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you so much for this temple that you have given to us, for your spirit to indwell, for our soul to reside. Father, I pray that each and every one of us take something from today's message. Remind us of an area where we maybe are not taking care in the way that you would like or hope so that we can be whole and complete so that we can be in service to you to do your will to glorify you. We love you and we thank you. And we lift this all up in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs>